Chapter 21, Cash Flow, will have three parts. I will first go over the direct method for operating activities. I will then go over the indirect method, which is part two. And then in part three, I'll go through the whole cash flow statement, including doing the direct and indirect method, because GAP would like you to do the direct method, and then in the end, go ahead and then do the indirect method, which is probably why most people would rather just do the indirect method. But here we go. We'll start with the direct method. Now, this is all about the presentation of the statement of cash flow. Now, normally we always start with operating activities. And operating activities can be, there are two different ways to do it. There's called the direct method, which is GAP's preference. And then there's the indirect method, which is what most companies do. This is the only area where there are two different methods. Okay, you still will get exactly the same entry regardless of which method you use. Then there's investing activities and then financing activities. So operations are from op general operating uh, activities and are tied to the income statement and all the changes in current assets and liabilities. Investing activities has to do with changes in long-term investments, including PP&E. And financing activity has to do with anything related to any transactions associated with equity or borrowing. Now, the two different presentations for the operating section, which tends to be the most challenging. Investing and financing is pretty easy, but uh, operations is a little tougher. So the direct method reports the cash effects of each operating activity, and the indirect method starts with the accrual net income and then converts it to cash by looking at current ass changes in current assets and current liabilities. So we're going to start with the direct method, and this is like a general outline of what you do. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to look at the income statement, which you always need, and then you're going to look at changes in our current assets and current liabilities on the balance sheet. So you need the current year income statement, and you need prior plus current year balance sheet. So we start with cash that we receive. Now it can be received from customers, which is going to be true of the example we have, or it could be true if you receive, had any rental income or anything like that, or interest income. Then we would subtract out payments. Now it would include to suppliers. We're going to take our cost of goods sold and we're going to adjust for changes in inventory and accounts payable. We're going to look at employee salary expense and we're going to adjust for changes in salary payable because that is going to tell us the true cash associated with those transactions. Interest again, we would look to see if we have any interest payable, which means we might have paid more or less of that interest expense based on cash. And then last is income tax payable. Now these are just the examples we're going to work through. And when you add all of that up, you will get your net cash provided by operating activities. So now what we're going to do is we're going to walk through an example. Now the, in your textbook, this is exercise 21-25. And what, again, what we need is our income statement. And we need our balance sheet. And then we need to look at what has changed, which I have right here in this column. It shows that, and what we're focused on are these changes. We're looking at accounts receivable, inventory, which are our current assets, and we're then we're going to also look at current liabilities, which was accounts payable, salary payable, interest payable, income taxes payable. So we're going to start with our income statement, and then we're going to see, we're going to adjust for anything that's not cash associated with these transactions. So first we're going to start with sales, but we know that sales is not going to be all cash if we have accounts receivable because accounts receivable means that we made sales on account. So we need to look at the change to see did we receive more or less of that 1320000 So 
What we're going to do for changes in net accounts receivable, we're going to back out any increases and add in any decreases. So our sales, and then we're going to look at the difference between the beginning and ending, and we went down by 12, which means that we received 12 thousand dollars, if this is really thousands, twelve thousand dollars more than we build in sales, which means our total cash receipts from customers is one million three thirty two. And we can put that now on our cash flow from operations. And that would be our first line item right there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go through the income statement and look at these category of expenses and we're going to see are there any um liabilities associated with these and the mainly we're looking at the change so now what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do oh now we have one little strange issue and it's only on this problem it's not any of your homework and that is we have a loss on the sale of a cash equivalent now normally we don't worry about any gains or losses but when it has to do with the cash account, what we do when we're doing this particular, the direct method, we have to adjust for it. So since it was a loss, what we're going to have to do in our case is subtract it out. So just to let you know, because it's a loss, we have to subtract it out because the truth of the matter is we took out 12, in, in this example, we would have taken out 12,000 for cash equivalents, but we only received 6,000 in cash, so we have to back out that six. Now we can do suppliers, which tends to be the most complicated, because for suppliers, what we have to do is take that cost of goods sold, and what we're going to have to do is take the cost of goods sold and adjust for any changes in inventory and accounts payable. So we're going to take our cost of goods sold, we're going to take the 500, and then we're going to adjust by the changes in inventory and accounts payable. So I usually like to do it this way, is I know that cost of goods sold was 500, which means that we would have credited inventory for 500,000. Now we can see how much we had in additions to inventory, which the offset would have gone to accounts payable. So in this case, we end up with 490, and you always want to check. Take 450 minus 500 plus 490 to make sure you get 440, which you do. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add it to our accounts payable account. And there's our ending balance, so we know that the amount that we've actually paid is 484. So now we can put that on our payments to suppliers. Now the same thing we have to do for employees, interest, and income tax. These are not as complicated, but what we have to do is take the amount shown as expense on the income statement and then adjust for any changes in our current liabilities associated with these accounts. So in our case what we have to do is we look at salary expense and then we look at salary payable. We look at interest expense and we look at interest payable. Then we look at income tax and income tax payable. Now we know we can figure out what our actual cash was associated with each of these items. So I like to do T accounts. I know I started with 86, ended with 80, had 220, so the difference is going to be I paid 226 for salary expense. Case of interest payable, I know that I had 40,000 in interest expense, so it's going to be 35 was actually paid for interest payable interest expense and then taxes payable we started with 10 we ended with 15 we had 182 in expense so that means we actually paid 177 and now we can finish up our cash flow from operations using the direct method and here we have it we're then going to add up all of our 
cash outlays, we get 928. We're going to subtract it from our cash input and we get net cash from operating activities of 404. That concludes the presentation on cash flow from operations using the direct method.